talk before lunch, so I'll try and uh, get through the presentation unless you all have a break for lunch. Um, I'm going to talk to you today about uh, a company that I'm the R&D manager for. It's a company called Mon and Biosciences. Um, I think everybody that was here was probably here for uh, Juan Valverde's presentation from Mon and Mushrooms earlier, um, so it means I can, I can go even faster through these slides. We are actually a subsidiary company of Mon and Mushrooms, and we are part of Mon and Mushrooms Group. However, we effectively operate as a high potential startup within the within the parent organization. So we exist effectively as an SME under the umbrella of the Modern Mushrooms Group. But as you can see from I'm sure Juan has already gone through, Modern Mushrooms is effectively a multinational company. Uh, started in Monaghan by one man, uh, Ronnie Wilson, in 1981. Um, and it has grown to have three and a half thousand, four thousand employees across Canada, Ireland, UK, the Netherlands, Belgium and Germany. Um, we, if we are not the largest, we are definitely the second largest fresh mushroom producer in the world, and we are definitely the largest fresh mushroom compost producer in the world. Um, and you can see that uh, we sell product uh, across 36 different, uh, different geographies. And in fact, you probably don't realize it, but because none of our labels go on any, on any of the mushrooms that we sell, but one in every two mushrooms that a person in, the, in Ireland or the UK consumes is actually a mom and mushroom. So. So that just gives you an idea of the spread that you can see. We have plants, uh, we have two locations in Canada, uh, we have multiple locations within Ireland, uh, multiple in the UK, and then a dense population, especially in the Netherlands and across Belgium and Germany. And you can see we sell 1,800 tonnes of mushrooms uh, on, a, on a weekly basis. And I'm sure you all know a mushroom is not a heavy, uh, a heavy piece of vegetable technically is not a vegetable, so to generate 1,800 tons a week is a, is a significant volume that we actually that we produce. So, in terms of the company itself, it's vertically integrated. We control every aspect of the supply chain. We make the compost, we ship the compost, we pack the compost, we grow the mushrooms, we pick the mushrooms, we harvest the mushrooms, we pack the mushrooms, we ship the mushrooms every single part of the supply chain. And it's the only way that a company our size and within a traditional business such as mushroom cultivation can survive. And you know, that's been the case for the last 10, 15 years, but especially more relevant at the moment. As you've seen from uh, what Dr. Valverde presented earlier and the fact that non and biosciences exist, we have a very strong commitment to research and development. Um, we are, as, uh, as Dr. Valverde uh, outlined earlier, the only company within Europe that has permission to sell vitamin D enhanced mushrooms uh, in Europe. And we have exclusive ac access to a mushroom strain which has exclusive taste and nutrition properties uh, within, uh, within Europe. And you can see actually that that strain in particular generates higher sales of all of the exotic mushrooms, so all of your oyster mushrooms, your shiitake mushrooms uh, that are sold within, uh, within the UK and Ireland. And then just to give you an idea, as, as Juan uh, highlighted earlier, we sell our vitamin D enhanced mushrooms, primarily started off with Marks and Spencer's, where our development partner in, in vitamin D enhanced mushrooms, and then also now a significant volume to Tesco, and the market is so strong that we're even shipping uh, out to the Middle East under the brand of Spinney's. So if any of you ever take a trip to Abu Dhabi or Dubai, you can take a look for our vitamin D enhanced mushrooms uh, uh, over, over there. Okay, then in terms of um, research projects that, uh, that the company is involved in, a uh, company I want to tell you about here, or a, a project is called BioRescue. This is funded under the Biobase um, uh, Industries Consortium. It's a Horizon 2020 um, uh, joint undertaking. Um, and you can see that uh, the remit of the project here uh, is basically to take mushroom compost, which is uh, a significant volume for every ton of mushrooms we produce, we generate three tons of waste uh, mushroom compost, um, and basically to use that as a feedstock within a biorefinery concept, and treat, a bar, I suppose, a ton of compost the same way the oil industry treats a barrel of oil, and no single extract from a barrel oil of oil is wasted, and we would say that no extract within uh, mushroom compost should be wasted either. And you can see this just shows the, the uh, process flow of, um, of uh, extraction techniques. Everything from the cellulose, the hemicellulose, the lignin, the NPK value, the trace metals, all the way down. And if you want to find out any more information, there's a dedicated website for that, it's biorescue.eu. 
following on from that, we also have the European commitment to another project which is called Fungus Chain. Um, and instead of this time looking at the waste compost, this time you're looking at actually um, the mushrooms and the mushroom stalks that never make it to the retail or into the retail chain. So approximately 20 to 25 percent of the volume of our produce actually is generated in byproduct in terms of mushroom stalks, or that gets rejected from the likes of Sainsbury's, ASDA, uh, Tesco, and, and comes back to us. The, property, the point of fungus chain then is to do exactly the same thing, and is to treat each fragment of mushroom uh, and break it down into the protein, the beta gluten, the chitin, the polysaccharides, the carbohydrates, and the oils that, uh, that are in there also. And also to look at the, any uh, residual compost that might be attached there. And again, if you, that's just a quick process flow of, uh, of, uh, of the project. And if you want to get any more details, you can check this dedicated website again, funguschain.eu will, will give you more details. There. So with that then, I move on to the company that I look after, and that's Monaghan Biosciences. And basically, well, what is Monaghan Biosciences? Well, Monaghan Biosciences is an industrial enzyme development company and applications company. Um, we are separate to the core business, but still have a synergy with the core business. But we are focused primarily on valorizing and using the spent mushroom compost as a feedstock, as a biorefinery, and concentrating on the three main components that I have highlighted here. So on the left hand side, you can see uh, you have a sample of spent mushroom compost, what it looks like. Um, you can see there's still fragments of straw, you can see the, the large clumps that exist there um, that exist there are actually lots of peat and actually the white flecks that you can see throughout it is actually the mushroom mycelia that has that uh, um, has incorporated through the compost for the fruiting bodies, i.e. the mushroom, to actually grow. However, spent mushroom compost is a rich source of the three elements that I've, that I've highlighted here, in particular cellulose, hemicellulose and lignin. And cellulose and hemicellulose in particular are effectively the sugar sources that animals and plants use to sustain, sustain themselves. We consume carbohydrates and we break them into glucose and xylose and we, we, that's, that's how we live basically. However, we do not have the correct enzymatic mix in our stomachs to be able to break down, for instance, grass or straw which is heavy in cellulose and hemicellulose. However, um, plants and animals, and especially fungi, uh, do, have the, do have the correct mechanisms to be able to do that. And we want to use enzymes. And well, what is an enzyme? So you're probably all aware of, you know, we have enzymes in our stomachs. Enzymes are what break down our food and release the sugar and the carbohydrates for us to survive. Well, enzymes effectively are a catalyst. However, enzymes can catalyze reactions many degrees of magnitude faster than any synthetic uh, catalyst that is out there. And the process we work on then is taking our spent mushroom substrate, combining it with our proprietary uh, thermophilic enzymes to be able to release the sugar. And you can see there, you've got glucose and xylose. These fermentable sugars then can be used as a feedstock in a biorefinery concept either for the generation of biofuels, so they can effectively just be fermented uh, like an alcohol. An alcohol brewing process, you can ferment those sugars into alcohol, or these sugars can also be used as precursors, precursors um, in the biopolymer um, uh, or uh, bioplastics uh, arena as well, which is, which is gaining serious traction within the European Union at the moment. In order to do that, well, what's the capability that we have in-house? We effectively have um, four, I suppose, multidisciplinary teams within Monaghan Biosciences. We have a team of 21, uh, 21 scientists um, across strain development, protein engineering, so molecular biology. Um, we have a fermentation team. Uh, we also have analytical development uh, team, and they all feed into the commercial, into the commercial applications team. And the commercial applications team is then the interface between the customers that we liaise with and the research that we do. So it is their, their job to interface between the customer and the research that is done, uh, done in-house. In order to do that, as I said, uh, we opened the dedicated state-of-the-art lab back in January 2014 in order to achieve that. We have 21 full-time employees and you can see the spread of we have a highly qualified staff of PhD and MSc uh, 
uh, trained staff at the moment as well. And you can see um, that looks like a lovely stock photo of a protein chromatography uh, system, but it's actually an active pure system that we have in the, uh, in the lab ourselves. Um, so we've invested heavily in terms of the infrastructure from a personnel point of view, but also in terms of an actual capital investment uh, as well. What do we have to achieve that? Well, we have significant industry uh, en enzymology and also uh, biotechnology uh, experience. Um, and we're quite unique in Ireland, actually not just in Ireland, but also within Ireland and the UK in terms of that. There's, there's very little white biotech uh, that we class going on within the UK and Ireland. However, there would be a concentration of white biotech within the Netherlands and Belgium and Germany going on as well. As a result, we've had to develop uh, an international collaboration network. There's not too many of the academic institutions in Ireland or the UK that, uh, that you can collaborate to achieve this. And we also have in-house and licensed technology. So we've, we've leveraged, I suppose, the core business then to be able to develop proprietary technology as a result. And you can see there, just on the right-hand side, a picture of some of the automated bioreactors or ferment fermentation vessels that we have there. So our core markets, well our core markets will always be spent mushroom compost or spent mushroom substrate and the valorization of that will always be our core concern into whatever application. In terms of biomass hydrolysis through these sugars, we have demonstrated that the enzyme technology that we have access to and that we have proprietary uh, knowledge of um, doesn't just work on the spent mushroom compost, it will also work on corn stover, it will work on corn fiber, it will work on sugarcane bagasse, it will work on molasses, it will work on many different, it will work on hardwood, softwoods, many different feedstocks that can be used um, around the world to be able to release these sugars. Um, in terms of the collaboration network that you can see we have there, it's quite an inter international uh, network um, and uh, the kit is with a particular focus between the Canadian and also the Dutch uh, institutions there uh, as well. So what do we have? We have a very strong backing from our parent group, Monaghan Mushrooms. We are in a very enviable position in the fact that we do not need to go to the markets for VC funding um, at regular intervals. We are funded solely by, uh, by the CEO of Monaghan Mushrooms, uh, Ronnie Wilson. Uh, we have significant grant funding from uh, local and also uh, from local, national and also um, European state bodies. And we have developed the technical ability and core competences to be able to uh, exist within the white biotech uh, arena and we have a very strong collaboration network as, as I said there. Biomass hydrolysis is our speciality and that, that's where we have developed our core competence. And also, the enzymes that we have, you might say, well, what's novel or what's you know, unique about the enzymes that you have? Well, the enzymes we have are thermoactive and also thermostable. So they can operate at temperatures elevated to what, uh, or higher than what is already existing in the market at the moment. And I'll show you some uh, results uh, to demonstrate that as well. We also have, as we have a molecular biology uh, capability within house, um, and I really don't want to touch on uh, even mentioning anything got to do with genetic modification, but we have the ability in-house also to be able to genetically modify uh, different genes and enzymes of interest uh, to, um, to um, I suppose, engineer those and uh, incorporate higher capability in each of those uh, in each of those strains. We have a wide range of experience across the uh, yeast and also fungi. Um, and we have a very flexible business model in terms of collaborations and joint ventures that uh, we can operate with. So now some results to actually show you, give you, give you the meat uh, behind the bones of, uh, of what I've been talking about. Um, you can see here, this is corn stover, and corn stover is, uh, is effectively the, the stalk material after corn is harvested, in particular um, in the States. So it's nearly like the American version of our straw. Um, and it is rich in cellulose and hemicellulose. And we've demonstrated with the largest bioethanol producer um, in the US, and we demonstrated on site at their facility, that we could demonstrate superior performance with our enzyme cocktail versus the market leader out there. So not only were we able to perform at a higher temperature, 65 degrees Celsius versus 55 degrees Celsius, we were also faster. The industry standard is 72 hours. We could achieve these results that I'm showing you here after only 20 hours, so a 3x uh, increase in performance. And also we had a much um, wider uh, pH robustness profile. As you can imagine, as you move to maybe a 50,000 gallon 
um, reactor to process uh, to process this material when you get to scale, it's not going to be a tight, clean room environment that you know we might be used to seeing within the pharma or the biopharma arena. This is effectively an open vessel in the sand pit of Iowa. Uh, so it needs to be robust and be able to operate at a high temperature to uh, negate against contamination. And you can see there we were able to achieve much superior hydrolysis at these temperatures. What does it actually look like? Well, actually, you can see on the left-hand side here, you can see corn stover, which has been macerated down to quite a high particle size. Uh, as you can see, this looks like there's no liquid in there. Believe it or not, our enzyme has actually already been mixed into that uh, at a 10%, at, a, at, a, uh, at a very small uh, solids loading. Uh, and you can see on the right-hand side, after only 20 hours, what has actually happened to the corn stover. It's been completely enzymatically hydrolyzed and macerated. And you can see you now have a liquid volume above there, that brown, brown liquid, and this liquid is the sugar-rich fraction. And it's now rich in those uh, C6 and C5 sugars um, as a result. So as a, and that's just again the, the, the same thing there. We also took a look at algae, and in terms of algae, it's probably a bit more of a slow burner, but we said, well, if our enzymes are working on so many of these different types of biomass um, uh, feedstocks, why not take a look at algae? Um, algae is stalled a small bit at the moment, but in terms of uh, versus mechanical extraction, again, we demonstrated that as a process aid, um, uh, combining a mechanical extraction or a physical extraction in combination with our enzymes was able to get a much higher in, um, uh, increase uh, extraction of what's known as exopolysaccharides, so very long chain sugars that the cosmetics industry are very interested in at the moment. And we also wanted to see, well, what are we actually dealing with here? So we went, and not many people have actually done this, but we actually basically got a high-end microscopic image of what the algae cells actually looked like. We needed to see what the cell wall of the algae looked like so we could tailor our enzymes to actually break down the algae cell wall. And you can see on the left hand side, you've got uh, an algal uh, strain called chlorella, which is known for its high protein content. And in fact, any of you who frequent uh, Holland and Barrett or uh, many different health food stores will see uh, chlorella or maybe spirulina being sold as a, as a green powder at the moment. If you are buying it and putting it into smoothies, stop. It's absolutely, you know, what they're selling you in the, in the health food shop at the moment has all the goodness already extracted. <laughs> so it's probably the equivalent of, uh, you know, the tea leaves that go into our lines, tea bags versus fresh tea is, uh, is probably the equivalent. And on the left hand side here you see schizochytrium, uh, which is a different type of algae, which is very high in omega-3 and omega-6 fatty acids. And this is gaining serious traction, especially in the animal feed area at the moment. Uh, and you see devilish nutrition for for example, have actually just released, um, uh, in conjunction with Moy Park, have started feeding their chickens algae like this, rich in omega-3 and omega-6 fatty acids, and they've shown that actually the omega fatty acids are carrying from the feed and into the lean, uh, the lean mass of the chicken, so you now have chicken breast fillets that are enriched with omega-3 and omega-6 uh, fatty acids. So you can see algae has been a slow burner, but it's starting to it's starting to ramp up again in terms of many different uh, applications. So yeah, thanks very much for your attention. And uh, any questions, uh, please feel free to ask now or give me a shout afterwards. Thanks very much.